Is this place a place where uh, anyone can be like uh, during a dream, you think, mm -hmm. or uh, as a spirit, or you have to be dead to be there? So and we can we can actually go there just in meditation. We can go there when we pray. Um, now we're not physically taking ourselves and being there, but what we're doing is we're allowing our our own soul, our spirit, to connect to that space and actually travel there and be there in, in, a, in a, a way. We allow almost like a shadow or a version of ourselves to be there. Um, and it's, and so any one of us can do that. In fact, there's a lot of meditation people um, or, or people in the meditation industry that teach about astral projection. They teach about um, uh, the Silva method or, or creating a sacred space that you allow yourself, your mind, your consciousness to go and be there. What's funny is when you start creating this conscious space and allowing your brain, your yourself to go and be there as a, a an escape from this life, most of the time the, the space you're creating is actually already exists. You're just seeing it. You think you're creating it, but you're actually just discovering it really. Um, you're discovering what's already there for us. And um, I actually lead groups in meditation and I coach people on how to connect the, to their inner light. And that's one of the exercises is helping them um, essentially climb Jacob's ladder and get their consciousness in the heaven space. Even in just a meditation, we can do that easily. Yeah. Great. Amazing. So uh, <laughs> please continue on that earth, that place. That, uh, so, yeah, I was, where... as I was experiencing heaven and really feeling the presence of God everywhere and feeling how much I was loved, even though I didn't feel I deserved that much love, I, I was feeling this healing process happen to me because I, I was raised in a, a, a fairly rough, abusive home. And so there was a lot of abuse that I had that I needed healing from. And, and I was able to receive that healing fully. I was able to receive that healing there. And as I was feeling um, all these, these broken parts of me disappear and get filled with this unconditional love that God had for me, as I was feeling this whole process happen, Drake came over to me and he, he came up and, and sided up to me and said, you know, Vinny, this is going to be hard, but it's going to be worth it. And so he put his, his arms around me and he hugged me. And as he hugged me, we brought, we brought our two energies together. And it was a very beautiful experience where I was able to see uh, that my own light, my own brightness became four times stronger when I came together with him. And the same with him, his brightness, his, his strength of light became four times stronger as we came together in this hug. And I was really in awe of this when I started to hear a special blessing, a special prayer. In fact, my brother who he speaks Portuguese, he was, he was in my hospital room next to my body. And I, I'd been in a coma now. I'd been brain dead for three days. He was standing there next to my body, giving a special prayer over my body. And when he said this special prayer over my body, he blessed that I would be made whole that I would become complete and that I would be blessed to come back to my body. And when he said, amen, when he closed that prayer, this is a, a testament to the power of prayer. When he said, amen, and finished the prayer, I was forced, forced back into my body. I had no agency anymore. The power of that prayer was so strong. The love that my brother was feeling for me was so strong it forced me back. I had no more choice anymore. I had to go back. And so I went, I left home because heaven is home. And I went back to earth. And that's where I woke up. I woke up in this, this body that I was sore. I was a little sore, but I was fine. I was completely fine. Now, you know, years later, all my teeth, they all had to be replaced because uh, when I would, when they brought the body back, I went into so many seizures, I shattered all my molars. So they, they, they all ended up having to be replaced one at a time, uh, sometimes two at a time over the years. But that's, that's the only lingering effect that I felt from that experience was, you know, 
having my experience and and waking up from it to to know that our life here is is far greater than we can know we have we have a very special purpose for being here and even when we don't know what that purpose is and we're afraid we're maybe we're not doing it that's not it the, the purpose of us being here is to love and to learn how to love and to share love that's what we're here to do so go out and do that and you're going to fulfill your purpose and amazing you told us that uh that the planet earth is transitioning mm -hmm. to a higher dimension and uh it happens to us we evolve and also planets also everything that there is evolves uh and it's very interesting when you told me about the light about how was the grass everything on that heaven you went could you tell us a little bit about that about that light about how everything was on a higher frequency planet yeah so so in a higher dimension like there like heaven uh, at least in that heaven which that's again the baby heaven that's the first part of heaven uh, light doesn't come from outside of the source so you know the way we experience light here on earth is we see light because the sun is the outside light or there's some outside light it it reflects on what we're seeing and that's what makes us see color that's what allows us to see and understand light but light there is source light that means light comes from within all things that means the the trees glow the grass glows the flowers glow they actually emit light so as you gather many living things in heaven you're getting brighter and brighter lights. And what's beautiful is some of the brightest light there is coming from the forests and from these gatherings of trees and, and even buildings are alive there. So I actually saw this, this a school type building. The entire building was built out of one piece of marble, but the marble was alive. And that if someone needed a door to show up, to arrive, to get into a room, And if they could match the love energy of what was going on in the room, a door would just form. They would walk in and then it would completely seal itself. But without using an actual door, just an opening would form and then it would seal up. The, the marble buildings actually emitted light themselves, but the light coming from the buildings was different than any other light in, the, in heaven. That was a golden light, but the light coming from everything in heaven was a white light. Like truly a the whitest white light you can see is coming from inside of all the living being creatures and beings even i emitted light light came off of me when i was there not as bright not close not even close as bright as drake or or the trees the plants the light was mm -hmm. so bright coming from those things mine was like a dim light because i i had just come from earth earth is a a place where light is outside yourself you think So we, we tend to not allow light within, but really, you know, it's, it's kind of funny when someone is pregnant, people will say you're glowing and it's true because there's a life force inside you. You start glowing, like there's light coming off of you. Now uh, it's probably like a, a, a form of light we have a hard time seeing, but we're perceiving it. That's why we say, oh, you're glowing. You must be pregnant, you know, that kind of thing. Interesting. It's like if here in Earth, on Earth, we have, uh, we need love. So we need light. So the sun is there to give us light. Yep. And we are always looking for more light, more light, more energy, because we need, we are like weak. But when we evolve and we learn to love, as it's one of your principles, the one of the 10 principles you taught us, mm -hmm. and you learn to love, you start to uh, to change this situation. So you don't need to receive love anymore like we yeah. do. You will start giving love. So yeah. you start being light. You start to sharing light and not uh, receiving light only anymore. So it's very interesting, this, this situation. It and it's funny, there's, there's a really strong dynamic there that sometimes when we feel we need light, if we would go give light to others, we will just receive light and and it's almost like when we need that inspiration 
if we can give inspiration to others, we then become inspired. We get the inspiration we wanted from the beginning. Um, you know, every single one of us has a little sun inside of us. Now, it, it might not be a physical thing, but I, I believe it is. I, I believe there is a small essence of light within all of us. And it, and it embodies around the top part of the heart. Because I can see it on people. Since my experience, I can actually see how bright their, their spirit light or their energetic light is. And that light starts, the, the, the seed, the seed of that light is in the top portion of the heart. It's like right above the heart um, on the top side. And that light blossoms around us. And, and here's what's really neat is when you get someone around their grandchildren who they really love, that light gets really, really bright. And, and you know, somebody who hasn't seen someone that they, they really love and they, they see them now after a long time not seeing them, that light gets very, very bright. And then when a, a mother becomes pregnant and she has a new baby growing inside of her, she gets very bright in that light. So there's many times where we become little sons. We become the beacon of light for the world. And, and truly, all of us have that power and that ability. But we need to, um, we need to follow the hour of power to, to really strengthen that light. And what the rule of the hour of power is, is to make sure the first 30 minutes of your day and the last 30 minutes of your day that you put very good energy in the, these windows. Because in the, the first 30 minutes of your day and the last 30 minutes of your day, you're framing who you are. And if, if you frame that in news, and you, know, uh, you frame it in, in Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, you, you frame it in one of these social medias that does not put light in you, you are framing your life in darkness. So it's important for you to use a frame of light. And the frame of light is your hour of power. So use the first 30 minutes when you wake up, go on a walk, go meditate, uh, go pray, go read, go read holy scriptures of, of whatever your religion is. Like connect to the creator. And then the last 30 minutes before you go to bed, same thing. Connect to the creator. Do something that helps you connect to the love force, the love energy of life. And that is going to now frame your day. It's going to frame your existence in light. And how different someone's perception and someone's existence is when it's in framed in light versus framed in darkness. And how easy is it for us to, to be positive and feel happy about our life when we frame our life in light compared to when we're depressed because we frame our life in, in darkness. So honor your hour of power and that's gonna help you honor your light, yeah. Perfect, no, perfect. Thank you very much for this hint. It's very, a very important advice for everyone. Uh, one, one more, I have one more two questions. I know <laughs> you must be tired already of talking that much, but it's amazing your story and uh, everything that you are teaching many, many, many people here. Uh, just one, one point when you told us that you had this revision of life, so you went there and you have a revision of life. That's very uh, common ground for many, many NDEs. Uh, and you told us that you could feel what you made bad to someone or good to someone. You could mm -hmm. feel, feel not what you lived, but what the other person lived. Yep. So uh, uh, what was he feeling when you were treating him? Uh, this person well or badly uh, and it's very different for sure when we know what we do by feeling it mm -hmm. Can you, you tell know, us it's a little bit it's very different now for me because now now if because i'm still a human i'm still an, uh, a normal person well somewhat normal i'm a little crazy but <laughs> um you know i live my normal life and in doing so if i if I send negative energy towards someone, I will actually feel, I will start to feel ill myself. 
And when I send positive energy towards someone, I will feel positive energy in myself. So I, who I am now, you know, I can't go back to the day where I could be mean or rude to someone and not have it affect my health. Now, if I do that, it actually affects my health. So, you know, my experience changed me completely when it comes to um, loving and respecting others. I now have to, I it, you know, unless I want to be sick. If I want to be sick, I can, I can do whatever I want. But if I want to be, if I want to be healthy, I have to love and respect everyone, even those who I don't agree with. Yeah. And to finalize, uh, please tell us a, a little bit about how this experience changed your life. Uh, what you're doing today, I know that you, you, you wrote a book. If you could a little uh, talk about uh, this book, the coaching uh, you give also. And uh, about your life, what changed after this experience? Well, the biggest thing is I changed my view, my view of people my view of life, my view of God, the creator, I realized that the, the creator is much bigger than our brains can comprehend. That our, our creator, if you want to call him God or, uh, or, or goddess, like you, whatever you want to call God, the creator, you can use the name you want, but the creator itself is so much larger than we could understand. There's not one religion that gets it accurately. Not one. Not one religion on earth gets it even close to what God really is. The only way you can know what God really is, is to go experience God. That's the only way. And guess what? We can experience God better through this temple, through our temples right here, than we ever can through a temple outside of us. Now, I love and I celebrate all religions. Every religion I love and celebrate. Because every religion is a way that you can connect to the creator through your religion. But I also want you to understand that the creator is much larger than your religion. That the creator will connect to you in a bigger and larger way than you can ever comprehend. So give, give God space. Give the creator space in your life. And, and the creator will show up and start helping and influencing you in a positive way. Yeah, so I, I do, I live very differently now because of my experience. Um, I have two kids, amazing kids, and uh, we love to travel. We love to go camping and experience life and go out and see the, the life energy and everything. Um, but I'll tell you, the biggest way I've changed is I've realized how important every single soul is, every single soul, from, from the smallest thing to the greatest being that every single soul is vitally important to the to God, the creator. And that once I embody that, I start honoring what I experienced. And so I do live differently than, than ever before. Um, I, I coach people, but I'm not like a, a regular life coach. I'm a spirit coach. So what I do is I help people um, figure out the best plan in their lives. And then when they need, you know, some extra help with um, getting back on track or, or getting, um, getting goals to be achieved in a, in a way that they can raise their love energy at the same time as be successful. So I, what I do is I strategize with them, helping use my connection to spirit and to our creator. And I really cater um, help and coaching them. In, in the right way so that they they themselves my my best experience is that i teach them to do what i'm doing so they don't need me anymore that's my best experience and and a lot of uh, my clients are that way i coach them for a small period and then they're able to do exactly what i am teaching them to do on their own and and then i can move on to help others and help others and help others there's plenty mm -hmm. of people that that want that help so i'm i lovingly provide it I lovingly provide that guidance. Um, I'm even doing a special retreat uh, just outside of Zion's Canyon this this year in August. We're doing a special retreat where we where we help activate the light within within the individual. Um, and all the details to that are on my website. If anybody wants to find out more, which which my website is livinggodslight.com. 
Again, that's livinggodslight.com. They can read about my book there. They can read about uh, me there. They can see interviews there if they want to. In fact, once this one's up and going, we'll we'll put that one up there so that people can see it. Um, and and there they can understand uh, what Living God's Light is. And it's a nonprofit. It's a, a spiritual education um, organization that helps people understand more about their dynamic of life and how to connect to the Creator and how to activate the light within them so that they can start giving light to others instead of feeling like they need to feed off of the light of others. They can start giving light to others. Yeah. Very good. Congratulations for your initiative. And uh, everyone that wants uh, to get in contact with you or know about your website, your book, etc., on the description of this video, we will leave all Vinny's information. Perfect. So it can be easy. And uh, I want to thank you again very much for your time to be be here sharing this amazing experience and everything that you learn with Drake and uh, on the other side. And it's important, very important to many of us to understand that this life is much more than what we can see is much more than what we many times think, many times we are stressed with many things, but wait, <laughs> wait, because uh, as you told us, it's just an experience, a fast one, and uh, we are learning. Yes. And all lessons here are important, very important in our evolution. So very important, if you want yeah. to say any final words? Uh, well, I, I do. Um if people want to find out, uh, you know, seven months after I had my experience, I actually found out who Drake is. I found out um, that he was related to me. And, and it, it's a real uh, neat experience to, to be witness to how I figured that out and found that out. And if they want to uh, figure, you know, read more about that, that's also on my website. But yeah, I, I figured out finally who Drake was and come to find out he was related to me. And it was, Somebody I didn't know uh, was related to me, so it was a, a beautiful, a beautiful confirmation about my experience. To when he to lived here, do you know? Do you have the, the idea of when he lived here? Uh, last so in century the, in the 1800s, he lived 1800s. here. Yeah, in the 1800s. Yeah, so uh, mm -hmm. it's really a, a beautiful experience to to know of that that his his purpose was foreordained long before he even died he knew he was going to be helping his ancestors you know cross over and that he would be an escort for them so it's it's quite a a, a beautiful thing and it was beautiful for me because um you know i i didn't know him i never heard of him before until i go to some special place and i saw him and and i'm like that's drake then sure enough it was so it's a really cool thing and it, it's all in the book it's also on the website too so if you want to read more Yes, and uh, this part of the story is also amazing and because uh, you you saw Drake in a picture, in an old picture, uh, uh, just to, to to make the people understand a little better here. But And then you you went to know uh, who, who is this guy? <laughs> who is <Yeah>. this guy? <laughs> and uh, uh, so everything has a purpose. You are not everything. there on that uh, it was a public place, correct? Uh, so. Yeah. You, you're not there for nothing. So everything is linked. Everything is like prepared. Everything has a reason. It's amazing. And there, in a public space, you see Drake. It's amazing. Yep. It's like a miracle. It it's not a miracle. <laughs> to, to me, I think definitely a miracle. Because to me, it was a miracle to know he was a real person. Because yeah. until up until that point, he was, he, he seemed otherworldly he seemed almost like an angel to me and he really was an angel and still is to me i i work with him regularly and i i love him so very much for for everything he does for me and in, in helping me in helping me help other people um and so he you know my relationship with him has continued and now you know for 20 years i've i've had drake in my life every day every You're day still connected with him yes. especially on the on the fourth principle, I believe, listen to your inner voice. Yes. Is he in your yes. inner voice? Yes. For sure. <laughs> he is. So he's one of my inner voices. I have many, but he has he's yeah. one of them. And and I really get to I really get to know him better now in knowing him for 20 years. 
um, I feel not only is he is he related to me, but I feel he is like a brother to me. You know, a very strong connection to him. And also Archangel Michael, I get a very strong connection to him as well, mm -hmm. which uh, he helps me quite a bit too. Yeah. Good. Now it shows the importance of uh, the ancestors in our life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And shows how life after life we are linked. So it's a continuation. Uh, it's like mm -hmm. we have a great... Uh, a big family, like, let's say a spiritual big family that we are not aware. And when we realize what are our spiritual family, uh, well, we cannot be alone. We cannot feel ourselves alone, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and we, our family is so large, so complex. It would be hard for us to even comprehend how big our family is. And yeah. all of us are brothers and sisters. Every single one of us is brothers and sisters. All of us. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Well, thank you very much again, Vinny. It was really a great pleasure having you here. And uh, let's keep in touch. Who knows? Another time you come here to explain a little better all principles. I don't know. <laughs> We're keeping in touch. But thank you very much. Thank you so uh, much. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. We see, uh, see you next time. See you next time. Obrigado. <laughs> nada. De nada. <laughs> Thank you very much. See you. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye. Take care.